What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we're going to talk about a few different things today. I got the S&P pulled up uh, today, SPX, the S&P 500. Um, looking at it, you know, I made a call, I think it was on this day, maybe it was on this day, maybe it was the day before that day, I don't remember, but I was talking about this bearish divergence that was presenting itself, but we've got, we actually ended up getting an extra drive of bearish divergence in there. What I mean by drive is you've got one drive here, I mean, technically, I guess this is one drive, but I don't know. I wouldn't count that. I would I would say technically this high is higher than this high, but you've got this peak in between. So I would really count this for all those of you who are trying to identify uh, divergences. It's not good, by the way, to get caught up in this kind of scheme. Like, yes, okay, take it into account, whatever. But really, that was the high to play off of this this high to this high. I would I think you're cherry picking at that point in time. Maybe not, but but I think so. You know, looking at the weekly. Okay, a little bit different. Um, double top, it's a double top, right? It's slightly higher, but that is a double top in the RSI, and you are definitely higher. On the weekly RSI, I wouldn't count this peak person. Oh, I don't know, fuck, man. That's that's actually, it's hard to say. That's really actually hard to say, to be completely fair. I don't know. Anyways, anyways, what? back to the daily. This, you know, that use use your best judgment, I guess. I don't know. I would call this a double top. It's like a W, I would call this a double top. And that, in a certain sense, when you have higher highs, is bearish divergence. It's not true bearish divergence, but it is to uh, some degree. Um, where this here is one drive, two drives, three drives, that's double bullish divergence, or bearish divergence, I'm sorry. And there's three drives, one drive here, two drives here, but it doesn't become bearish divergence until here, right? You need two drives to make one. So two drives equals one, three drives equals two, four drives would be triple. And I, I, you don't normally see things that are more than triple that come out to be accurate. So anyways, what's kind of crazy is we've broken out of this nice uptrend that we had on the uh, on the RSI, getting into like the actual meat of it, not just talking talking semantics here. Um, we broke out of this, clearly we have. And, and the day hasn't closed yet. We have an hour and 41 minutes left. A lot can happen, but this looks like a breakaway gap to me, at least to the downside, or a breakdown gap. I forget what they're called, but uh, definitely looks like we're breaking out of this range. We have one, two, three drives, right? Two drives of bearish divergence. I would think that this implies that we are going to go lower. And this, let's see, this high was up here. We're already below it. We broke out of this range. I definitely do think that we found a momentary top in the S&P. Maybe it looks like something like this. Maybe it's a bit more dramatic. Maybe it's even more dramatic. I don't know, but we're, we're going to see. You know, things are definitely in trouble for the uh, for the stock world and probably the crypto world as well. But let's go. Let's go out to the monthly and just see. Yeah, man. You're finding resistance in not an unusual area, I would say. Look at that, right? You got above the 786. You you wound up here, held the 382, held the 236, then you held the 382. Now you're up. I would bet this thing wants to go back to the 618, between the 618 and the 69. If not, you'd really want to hold 4497. You'd want to hold that on the S&P, hold the 786 there. Um, is that the right? Yeah, that is the right one to, to gauge it off of. Let's see. What about the extensions? Yeah, look at that. From this, the way that I'm drawing it, right? I'm drawing from this peak to this low here. It might be more obvious on the weekly. This peak to this low, we get it there, right? Peak to low, and we are finding resistance at the 1272. Classic, very classic, man. And look look at this, right? You broke, you broke through the 618 on your first pass. You went down to your 382, broke through it again on your second pass. You kind of disrespected the 618. Whenever I see that kind of stuff, I definitely would expect um, extensions. I personally would. And once you got above it convincingly here, you bounced off the 6.9 area, you held the 7.86 and just up from there you go. It would not surprise me if we went down to the uh, the 8.82 or the 8.86, I'm sorry, of this range, which would be about, let's see, that's that's right around, right around 4, 420, right around, or 4, 4, 220, 4, 4.220, something like that. Um, 4,220, yeah, something like that. 4220 and 21. I, I don't know. I keep I keep repeating myself, but yeah, somewhere somewhere around there is what my overall expectation would be. And wouldn't you know it? That's also actually right where the purple line is, right? And we've shown significance on this line a couple times actually. Disregarded it here a little bit, but here resistance, here support, here resistance, here resistance, here resistance. We broke above it, found support on it, and then up. It would not surprise me if we pulled back a little bit from there. Um, and let's just see. The 382 on this overall move, which is a very normal thing to do whenever you pull back, come on the 382, bounce off it, and then continue to grow from there. 
and it doesn't have to be a straight shot. It can be a straight shot. It can go lower. You know, there's, this is not a prediction of what's going to happen. This is just an idea of what we could see. If we were to come to the 382 and hold that as support and then continue to go from there, that to me would make sense because not only is it classic and a fit perspective, but we also have resistance here multiple times. If we held resistance on this kind of area, it's right below the purple line. The 50, I'm assuming, let's see, the, the long-term RSI. The long-term RSI is above the 50, which would imply that anything below this purple line would be a good time to buy. And I definitely would stand by that. Maybe we do go below the 382. Maybe we have a flush out, a flash crash, and then up, you know, as we did here, we got a big wick down and then up. Maybe we have a big wick down to like the 618 and then up. Um, though, I kind of would expect the 0.5 to hold if we were to get below the 382. I would expect the 0.5 to hold. But but at the, at the current point in time, I'm kind of more anticipating we bottom where we bottom before, found resistance before, found resistance before. I would think that this is a good area to find a low. And on the overall FIB range, where does that put us? I think that takes us below the 618. Yeah, it does. It takes us below the 618. And it's actually right around this one's 0.5. So that, that to me makes total sense. We could go below it, um, wick below it or something like that on a weekly basis. Maybe we close below it and then reject and come back up the next week. But I do think one way or another, we are going to bottom in this, uh, this kind of area here, this circle. I'm going to get rid of everything else to just leave that on there. And I drew that circle very specifically because I do mean that I think we bottom, you know, maybe we bottom right at the purple line, which would be around like 4262, 4270, something like that. Or maybe we go as low as about like uh, 4100. So either 4270 to 4100, something in there, I would I would expect that to be the uh, the retracement that we'll see. And there's there's a bunch of different reasons for that. But that's, that's just my opinion. Let's see. Double top on this. We do on the daily, we just broke out of the trend. But on the weekly, we still have this trend in the S&P. Coming down, we could come down quite a ways on the RSI. Um, it could take its time getting there too. It doesn't have to do it immediately, but but we would still maintain this trend. I don't think this is the top. I do think that it's going to scare some people out and make them think we're in a downtrend. This is a lower high, but really, I think I think we're getting ready to break these uh, all-time highs. Who knows when that's going to happen? But maybe by the end of the year, um, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Looking on the monthly monthly RSI doesn't look half bad. To be completely fair. Um, you are in the bullish area of control. We'll see. We'll see how this thing interacts. You know, it looks like it likes to come down out of this area, bounce right around here. Maybe we come down. Maybe we go even a little lower. I don't know. But I would expect that we kind of maintain some bullish posturing in that as well. Um, but the daily, the daily is definitely more immediately bad. And what does this mean for crypto and for stocks and for a lot of things? Well, this doesn't necessarily mean good things because Bitcoin, if we were to throw a correlation, you know, I've got, I've got this done, so I don't, I don't really need this anymore. We're going to throw indicators. Do I have it on here? No, I don't. Okay. So technicals, correlation coefficient, right? That's what we're looking for there. And we were to type in BTC, um, BTC USD. Sure. We'll go on the index and apply it. Oh, right now we have not been that correlated, honestly. We haven't been correlated because this has been going up while BTC has been kind of going down. So that's why we haven't been correlated. But it looks like we're at an area where in this correlation coefficient, we've bottomed before, we bottomed before, we bottomed before, right? Something in this area. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we started to turn up. And what this means is that if we turn up, that means we're more correlated to the S&P, which means if the S&P is dropping, as you know, as it's dropping, this correlation is turning up. That means that Bitcoin and S&P are making similar moves. If Bitcoin is going to make similar moves as the S&P and the S&P looks like it's going down, that could imply that the rest of crypto too is going to go down um, or at least see some, some bed shitting. Um, on the weekly, much more correlated, right? Over time, you can see like in the day-to-day in -day stuff, it fluctuates a little bit more. But on the weekly, you can see it doesn't really go below this 50 too often, does it? And if it does, it's a lot shorter lived. It's most of the time correlated. I know a lot of people want to think that Bitcoin is not correlated to the S&P or to stocks. But, you know, you, you take it out even further to the monthly. It's very, very, very correlated. Like very, very, very correlated. So um, we're probably getting ready to... What's the word I'm looking for? It's like detach. What 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 is the word? There's there's a word for it. I'm gonna use the word detach because I can't think of the word. Um, but we're looking to decorrelate. Maybe that's the word. I don't know. Decorrelate, detach from this correlation that we're experiencing. Um, maybe not right now. Maybe not quite yet. Who knows when that'll happen? A lot of people have been speculating that for a lot of bull cycles now. You know, like basically every bull cycle that we're gonna decorrelate from 
from the S&P or from stocks, but we haven't done it yet. So let's just see. If anything, we've gotten more correlated over time. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, looking at BTC, going to BTC now. Um, I'm going to take away the correlation coefficient. I guess we're going to fly blind without our long-term RSI. That's okay. It's not, it's not super important. It doesn't really change too often, right? We haven't made a big move that would signify that. Look at this, man. We're already at $29,000. We went up to 30,000 yesterday and here we are back down. Finally, Bitcoin is showing some life. We're getting some movements up and down and all around. I did say this yesterday in my video that you know, every single time throughout this range that we've had a bullish engulfing candle that we've seen some bearish price action afterwards. And I, I even said, I'm pretty sure I said, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody watched the video, but I'm pretty sure I said it wouldn't surprise me if we got a bearish engulfing candle on today. And we do. And this is actually a rather big candle compared to the past like week or so, but it's not the biggest candle, right? It's only 2.24%. So everybody's probably freaking out over a 2.24% move in Bitcoin. This is a very controlled drop, you guys. I don't think that we're going to zero. I don't think that the bear market is still in effect. I do think we're gonna maintain these higher highs. If we were to break this high, that would be kind of surprising to me. Things would actually start to look very bad. I said high, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking about lows. Um, but let's see, if we were to go from bottom to top here, maybe I should use this top. Yeah, if we held the 236 right there, we might not even go to the 236, but we could hold this line here. If we were to take, you know, from bottom to top here, not the top top, but that top, we could go to the 618, to the 0.69, maybe even the 786, which is right below this 236, somewhere in that area. I am more expecting that we are going to bottom somewhere around like 27,150 to $26,700, somewhere in there. But we very well could have found our low this week. It's it's completely possible. Um, oh, this is on the Coinbase chart, so that's that's not the real low. I'm sorry. BTC USD. Let's go on the dollar. Or I guess that is the real low. No, it's not. I don't know. I don't know. Is that the? They look the same. Is it different? Let's see. The low is twenty-eight thousand six hundred eighty-five. 28,477, so that's a couple hundred dollars lower. I don't know. Everything else besides Coinbase agrees with this chart, so I'm gonna go off of this one. Um, but they are bouncing, but their purple line, it, it did show respect on both of them, right, on their purple line, that's kind of interesting. Um, but I do think that we're gonna go lower. Let's see if the fibs are different here. No, it's, it's like $50 higher here, it's like $50 higher here, so just a little bit, but still in the same general area of like 27.1, 27.2 to uh, 26.7K. I think we're on our way down there now. I do think looking at the daily, looking at the RSI, we are getting into those weaker zones of control. We just rejected the 50 for a second time and we're maintaining this uh, lower high structure that we have in the RSI. As we get into the oversold zone, we are gonna see bigger moves to the downside, likely. It doesn't have to happen, but likely. And what do I mean by bigger moves? I mean, look at look at when this range started forming and look at all these moves. They're going to be bigger than all these moves. Are they going to be bigger than this? Maybe. Are they going to be are they going to be bigger than this? I would say likely, very likely. The biggest move we had was 3.57 on a daily close. 3.5 is that is that right? Really small moves, man. So it's not saying much. We could have a 5% move in one day for Bitcoin to the downside, close it like that. And that fits the criteria I'm looking for. And I would expect those kind of moves to happen toward the end, you know, when we're getting into these oversold areas, when we're getting toward the end of this, this down move. We've been in disbelief that we're going down for quite a while. You know, it's been throwing a lot of people's heads for a spin. Every time we went down, we went up, we went down, we went up, we went down, we went up, we went, down, we went you know, like it just really, really wasn't. And, and beyond that, like, it seemed a lot more dramatic than it, than it actually was every single time. Because look at this, this big candle everybody got so excited for. It was a 3.4% day, you know, like, like people are getting excited over here for 6% days. Like we haven't had, I still believe Bitcoin hasn't had a 10% day on a closing basis. Bitcoin hasn't had a 10% day since over here, November of 2022. It's almost been a year where Bitcoin hasn't seen a day that closed with a 10% um, candle, whether it's to the upside or to the downside, I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Yeah, up or down. There's no, there's no, they got close, 9.46, but let's be technical here, right? 9.49 even, but we haven't had a day where we saw, we saw a 10% move. I think we, as a crypto community, have forgotten the might and the, the volatility, the momentum that this thing that we call Bitcoin can, can do. 
it can move more than 10% a day, man. It's actually kind of crazy that we haven't seen a day in almost a year now. You know, give it, give, give a few months on that, but, uh, almost a year. Let's see if it's August, September, October, November. Yeah. Like three months, literally three quarters of a year without seeing a 10% move. I've gone back and measured. Um, I've done this before and I went throughout its whole history and I'm pretty sure we haven't gone like more than, uh, more than a month or something like that. Maybe it was more than 60 days, but we've, we have destroyed that record now. Now we're at like 200 and something days. It's insane. Um, I'm getting lost on just like a little curio there. Let's, let's get back to the main thing. Main thing at hand is I think we are going lower. I think we've kind of set up a little base here, right? We had our base here. We broke out of it. We had our base here. We broke out of it. We had our base here. We're breaking out of it. And wouldn't you know, each time we broke out of it, we had a bullish engulfing candle and then bearish engulfing candle down. We had a bullish engulfing candle, bearish engulfing candle, and then sideways, right? And then bullish engulfing candle, bearish engulfing candle. Could we move just a little bit lower, move sideways again? It's possible. Could we finally have some move that is a flush out? I'm hoping so because I'm getting bored. I'm sure everybody is of these little moves right here. Everybody gets so excited and so bearish, so bullish on all these little candles. I want to see some life. I want to see see some Bitcoin moves that we just haven't seen in, in quite quite literally a very long time. So looking at the daily, I don't like the RSI. I do think it wants to go to this oversold zone. It probably will. It, it hasn't been in the oversold zone in quite some time. Um, this might be the longest stint that it's gone without being in the oversold zone too, man. Like even dipping into it, you know what I mean? Like this, this is a pretty long time. Like it, it came close, but it didn't actually get into it. So I think we are overdue for some time. Um, in the oversold zone. On the weekly RSI, finally starting to turn down a little bit. It's looking less neutral, a little bit more bearish, but still overall it is neutral. Um, you are rejecting this. You're coming out of the bullish area of control, and there's not really a whole lot to go off of on the weekly. To a certain degree, I guess, you have this. Maybe it's more like this. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe it's something like that. I, I, I don't know. You're in a kind of uptrend here, right? With your RSI. If we break this line, maybe maybe the sign isn't even drawn accurately. Maybe it's more like this line here. I don't know. Um, maybe it's more of a curved line. And it's not a straight line. And if we break it, you know, we like we, we might be close to breaking out. I don't know. But but on the uh, on the weekly time frame, if we can get to this 50 or below this 50, I think that would start to look bad for Bitcoin, right? To the 50. Maybe not to it. Even if we get below it, it wouldn't start to look completely bad, I guess, from this perspective. But from this perspective here, you know, if we if we have our low tethered to that low, we go here, we're kind of about to break this line here. So I don't really know what to make of this on the on the weekly hour side. I stand by it with with the fact that I say it's neutral, but it's starting to look bearish as we're going through it. On the monthly basis, monthly looks good. You know, I don't I don't think we're in jeopardy at all of this uh bull market being compromised. I do think that the bear market is over. Could be wrong on that. You know, I was a very mega bear down here and it took me a second to be bullish. I, I think it was this candle or maybe it was this candle that, that led me to believe that we're bullish. Um, or no, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't that. I'm, I'm wrong. It was like, I was bearish down here, guys. I was even bearish before this last pump. Thought that we were still in a bear market, but you know, this, this candle is what proved me wrong ultimately. Um, and now I'm definitely convinced we're in a bull market. You know, we got higher lows, higher highs. We're very close to the halving date. Um, I say very close. It's in April, May, February, March, something like that next year. Um, the Litecoin halving is today. Speaking of halvings, actually, I might make a video on Litecoin after this just because. Um, but I'm just I'm just kind of going all over the place at this point. I feel like I've given my my same old, same old general expectations for where the price could go. You know, maybe we go to this high here, this closing high here, this tip, this tipping high here, something like that. Likely, in my opinion, we're likely to go lower around 27.1 to 26.7K. Again, 27.1 is like this 618. On, on the Binance chart, it's like 27.2. Um, and then the 69 is at about 26.7K right there. So somewhere in between this orange and this white line is where I expect us to go. Could it happen in three days? Sure. Could it happen in three weeks? Sure. You know, could it take a month to do? Sure. You know, we, we have been moving very slow. So, but I do think seeing this kind of action on the RSI, getting into these lower uh, limits of the RSI into the oversold zone, that will promote bigger moves to the downside. And we are, we are overdue for some big moves, guys. We haven't had it in quite literally three quarters of a year. So, so will it be to the downside that we see our first 10% candle? Will it be to the upside? I, I don't know. I would more think to the upside, but 
but we'll see. We'll definitely see. I'll keep you guys posted. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to see more, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.